The seeds were sown over the previous decade, with their near upset of top-seeded Georgetown as a 16 seed in 1989. In a game many credit with saving the automatic qualifier for the NCAA tournament, Princeton proved it belonged on the national stage. The Georgetown game put, put the uh, Princeton basketball on the map for a lot of people not from the East Coast. After the Georgetown game, Princeton, we went three more times in a row, and every one of them was a heartbreaker. Narrow losses to Arkansas, Villanova, and Syracuse the next three years solidified Princeton's place in the national landscape. In 1996, by virtue of their Ivy League playoff win over Penn, the Tigers were back in the NCAA tournament after a three-year hiatus. We sat in Sidney Johnson's dorm room. We were packed in there, 15 of us packed in, and they put UCLA Princeton 4 seed versus 13 seed. It's like you just got called up to the show, right? Like it's like you see the next day, it's like boom, Princeton, UCLA. And you, you know, you might think for like, ooh, the defending champs. And you're like, yeah, all right, here we go. And you know, it doesn't hit you until you show up for practice and the coaches have this look on their face like, okay, this is gonna be hard. We just won our big game was at, against Penn to get to, the, like that was the biggest thing. To me, that was huge. And UCLA game was just kind of like a little gravy that, we get a chance to play again, and I had no idea what I was getting myself into and what we were getting into as a team. The ball went up for the tip, and we didn't even jump for the ball. I think we just ran back on defense. I remember being down 7 nothing, I think, and the ball was just flying. Bo Bannon for three. Long rebound, and it's whipped inside J.R. Henderson. Trailing by seven late in the first half, Mitch Henderson and the Tigers would chip away. There's Mitch Henderson. Mitch Henderson. Did a great take left handed. Here's Sidney Johnson back to Henderson and he'll stroke it. Yeah, that's the one you've got to make. 18 on the shot clock. Oh, they got him. Door cut long. Yes. Got him. You could see it coming. Going into halftime felt like, yeah, there's energy here. And it was 1918, which is the kind of game we wanted to play. It was an ugly game, and that's, I think, what we had to do to win the game. Underdogs didn't really beat a lot of teams back then. Now there's a lot more parity in college basketball where it happens more often. But in that game, you start hearing the roars and the fans. What you saw was you had UCLA fans and you had everybody else and everybody else became Princeton fans. To make a, a big dome where the Indianapolis Colts played uh, loud, um, it has to take a lot. And it started getting loud. Reggie Miller, beloved Pacers at the game, he's wearing a hat backwards. It's close game and he, the, uh, Jumbotron goes on Reggie and he's, you know, everybody, yay, yeah, Reggie, and he turns his hat around and he's wearing a UCLA hat and he points to the UCLA. Booze everywhere. You know. A layup by Chris Johnson would give the Bruins a seven point lead with just over six minutes to go. That was the last time UCLA would score. And a steal, door to Henderson, 3 0 -1. Ball was loose underneath the basket. Doyle picks it up, and I remember saying like, Doyle! And he just flipped it to me, and it was, it was a two-on-one with me and Sid, and boom, there it is, the crowd. You can feel the tension in the arena uh, right away. Like, right, it's like, this, this could happen. Here's Chris Johnson, dribble penetration. We never called timeouts. So it's 41-41, we get the rebound, we're dribbling the ball up the court, and there's coach like, boom, time out, you know? There wasn't much of a doubt. This is what we're gonna do. Every March, I get asked about the layup. It's called center forward back door. We had done it all the time. We never really got the layup that often in the league. Most people knew it was coming. We had a successful play at the end of the first half, center forward back door. We were, I was wide open on a layup. They were not ready for that play. So we called the timeout and we all ran to the sidelines and we all kind of like center forward back and we kind of just like we're talking. And then the assistant coaches got together with Coach Carrill and they say, all right, we're gonna run center forward back door. Every one of us said the same exact thing. You know, we call it center forward back door twice. Bill, John, Joe came to coach and said center forward and it was like, yes, this is what we're doing. From what I recall, I don't think it was set up for me. So, uh, you know, we did this, which is basically let's, let's run a little clock. Sydney starts to play and he's going towards his left. Steve Goodrich jumps up to the foul line, elbow. Sydney gets the pass and I cut back door as soon as Steve catches it. And Charles O'Bannon, who was guarding me, I wasn't open. And 
again, ingrained during practice for the last three months. If you don't get it, you pop back out on the baseline, wait a second, and then pop, cut again. And then he comes back, one dribble, and I cut. Back door! It was unusual, I think, the way we set it up, and Steve sold it, right? Like, we talk about being a good thespian here, like be a good actor, like act like it's not there and then go back and get him again. They stopped the first play that we had, and during the time I always said, when you retreat from where you're trying to go, they think they have you beat, now do it again. And it just worked perfect. Then I'm like, how much time is left? Like, or how much, like, is there seconds? Like, what are we gonna do here? I was watching. I was ball watching, and I think, I'm not sure what we would have done if we didn't get that layup. Gabe, Gabe made a lot of big layups that season. That was obviously the biggest one. After Gabe's layup, it's 43 to 41, and there's about a seven minute delay. The refs had to go back to the clock and see how much time was actually on the clock, and it really was like, it felt like 10 minutes. The coaches were really focused on just trying to make sure that UCLA didn't get anything easy. I was guarding Charles O'Bannon, and I just remember I'm not gonna let him I'm gonna stay on the basket side of him. I pretty much knew I, if you know if there was a perimeter player, I was probably gonna be matched up against them. And, and Toby Bailey was a fantastic college player, and so um, I drew that assignment. 43-41, UCLA down. Cameron Dollar inbounding the basketball. Well, that's what the time I was called, but they gotta watch the log. Here's Bailey. He'll get it off. He did get me off balance, he pump faked, and I went for it, and he stepped through, and I, I threw a hand back to try to bother it. When he shot it, I'm like, I'm boxing the heck out of my man, not letting him get a tip in to, to put this game in overtime. It looked like it was going in from where I was standing. I'm hoping maybe a fingernail or something bothered him. Thankfully, we were able to kind of stay in front of everybody and, and have a relatively tough shot, and uh, it went to the, uh, the good guys, Princeton won. It was just pure elation. I just remember all of just running with our hands up. We didn't know what to do. We ran towards half court. Mitch's iconic jumping up in, in the air was right then and there. You could hear the crowd getting behind us. You could see our crowd there, the band. So, uh, you know, I remember just making a run right for everybody else on the team. And I was running off the court after the game. It felt like I shook, shook like a thousand people's hands. And a photographer had said to me, he said, I got a really good shot of you jumping up. We had the win. We had the win for Kirill in his last game. And now everybody wanted to talk to him. And everybody wanted to talk to somebody from Princeton. It was a dome, so to get to the locker room was like a trek. Like, you had to run to the other side of the, of the RCA dome to get. So it took a while to get there. And we get in there, and, you know, we're taking pictures. It was like such a perfect moment, but it's a little hazy. I would check my voicemail and you would log in and you'd say your mailbox is full. Take down all those messages and, and then you know, try to return all those calls, set up as many interviews as possible. They were all the same thing. We're sports radio in San Antonio, Texas, and we're sports radio in Boise, Idaho, and we're sports talk radio in Seattle, and we just need somebody, anybody. And tried to get as many people as we could. And by the time you got done answering, like clearing your voicemail, it'd be full again. I think every player talked to somebody. Even the manager was on Sports Talk Radio in Detroit. Tom McCarthy got that. His call ended up on WFAN, leading into the Mike and the Mad Dog show the next day. That was great for him. Dollar looking to get it inbound. Gets it into Toby Bailey. Spins toward the baseline. Sizes up a shot. His shot is no good. And the Princeton Tigers have defeated the UCLA Bruins 43-41. to We were the biggest thing going in, in, in sports for 24 hours.